Hello, everybody. Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom 2015, brought to you by Homefront the Revolution. I'm Max Scoville. Joining me is Michael from Focus Home Interactive, and you're showing off Techno, uh, Technomancer. The Technomancer. Right? Yeah, it rhymes with right. my favorite book, Necromancers, or Neuro <laughs> Neuromancer, Technomancer. It's cool compound words. Being yep, they're combined. certainly a different thing, though. What's going on here? You so this magic is and technology. Exactly. This is the uh, the fifth game from Spiders Games, uh, who have been doing RPGs for seven years now, unbelievably. And uh, the Technomancer is uh, set on Mars, except it's set long in the future after Mars has been a colony. And what happened was there was a giant cataclysm which pushed Mars outside of its current orbit, and they lost contact with Earth. And one of the really cool things about this story is when it was a colony, there were four, uh, four water companies who were, who were you know, pumping out water, terraforming the planet, and, and getting everything going. And because they lost contact with Earth, in fact, um, the water companies became major political powers. Mm -hmm. So this game takes place hundreds of years after this happens, and they're having to recycle lots of the things the first colonists brought to Mars. Uh, so there's uh, maybe like six different factions in the game, and you'll have to ally with some of these factions and, and pick and choose who's going to uh, who's going to help you get through the story. Okay. And, and you who, play. Who are you, who are you playing as? You're playing as a technomancer. Okay. And I won't spoil it right now. We'll get to that in the game. But the technomancers are a really special, uh, not race of people. They're, they're humans, but they have a really unique ability to um, to make use of their uh, bio bioelectric capabilities, which means that they have special abilities to do with lightning, mm. which is way cooler than midichlorians. Yeah, I like that you've got, you've got um, clearly some kind of medieval themes here. You've got, you know, sword shields and, and stuff exactly, like that. Exactly, because then, they, they don't have futuristic technology because right. they were cut out from, from but Earth. But then you have like a classic, you know, cyberpunk trope of, of big corporations running stuff. And exactly. You know, well, on you know, in the implants. end, it's, it's almost like oligarchs, you know, the people who control the resources control the power. And uh, the technomancers are warriors, so they're employed by some of these, uh, some of these different um, water companies. And uh, what Sebastian is showing you right now is the crafting abilities in the game. Oh, wow. Now, being an RPG, crafting is, of course, important. And what you can do is you can craft uh, not only your clothing and stuff, but also your weapons and make phys physical and visual changes to your weapons. How does the combat work? Uh, there are three different combat styles. Uh, in the alpha, the one we'll mainly be playing with is the staff, which is the classic Technomancer style. So we've got really nice mo-capped animations for the, for the combat. You can see them with the staff now. And uh, I think what he will do... Ah, this is the second combat... Uh, the shield, which is more of a CC crowd control guard uh, warrior stance. Mm. And uh, this is the, ah, that's the warrior stance, yep. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's head down through the, through the valley here. So uh, the Technomancer uh, is not actually an open world, but it's more like Mass Effect and it's hub worlds. And as you go through the game, you can come back and explore things that you missed previously. So you don't just go across a, a linear path, you can come back and unlock new things and see things you haven't seen before. Uh, he's walking with Sean right now, who's his master. So right now he's going through a kind of rite of passage uh, as Sean is telling him about the Technomancers and, and, and how okay. they became who they are. Now, just to back things up for a second, are you right. a custom character or are you uh, like a scripted written kind of solid character? Yeah, this is uh, Spiders do narrative games. So you're, okay. you're, uh, you're, uh, you are Sean. Okay. Uh, no, not you're, you're not Sean. You're Zachariah. Okay. Uh, you're with Sean's Sean. your she's yeah. Your Sean's there. one okay. of the companions. You'll have uh, uh, up to two different companions in the game. Uh, you'll meet many different companions throughout the game, and they will level up with you, uh, and you can change their gear and, and spec them too. And Sean will actually fight with you right now. Now, what he's done is he's buffed his staff right there, which is one of the Technomancer powers. In the top uh, left-hand corner in the hub there, you'll see uh, four different blue uh, kind of dots. And they're your uh, ability slots, and they'll recharge. But when you've got a buff, it'll not recharge to the full. So you have to really manage. Uh, either you have a buff, and you can use more uh, active abilities and recharge it, or, uh, or you don't use a buff, and you have more slots to use your active abilities. So there's a little bit of management there. And as he sprints, you'll see the, uh, the stamina bar go down as well, so you become less efficient okay. in combat and stuff like that. And uh, the, uh, the red's obviously the health. So this is, uh, these are bandits. So bandits are one of the factions in the game, and uh, they're all over Mars because they're scavengers. It's a right. scavenging colony now. It's disconnected from Earth. People need to collect resources to survive. So there's a lot of bandit factions all over the world. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a vaguely post-apocalyptic, but in space. I mean, it's it's yeah. like it's... Uh, Post-cataclysmic qu It's quite a long time after kind of the apocalyptic right. scenario right now. But I mean, before they came, Mars was even less habitable. Yeah. So, yeah. 
relatively speaking, is pretty apocalyptic. What are we looking at here? Uh, this is one of the vistas uh, that's overlooking uh, an old relic of the humans, which is sort of a research center. And inside, it's technomancers only. So only technomancers can open this building. One of the really cool things about that is uh, when you go back in the game, you can actually um, uh, go back with a Technomancer uh, companion and unlock some of these areas that you hadn't seen before because only Technomancers can open them. Ah, I gotcha. So right now what you're looking at the four skill trees for uh, each of the uh, each of the different ways to skill up. You can skill up your combat styles and also your Technomancer powers. So the, the big ones are the active skills and the smaller ones are the passive skills. There's attributes and, and all of those things you would expect in, a, in an RPG as well. Yeah. So he's going to run back to Sean right now, and they're going to continue down to go to the dome, I think. Now, we've seen, we've seen him fighting, um, you know, for hum humanoids, right. you know, maybe a little bit you know, yep. distant future. Uh, are we going to see kind of supernatural creatures? You want to know if you see aliens? Are we going to see aliens? You're not going to see aliens, but you will see wildlife, and it's not natural wildlife. Uh, what it is, in fact, is um, it's uh, uh, experiments that humans did with uh, DNA from uh, life on Earth when huh. they brought it to Mars. So a lot of the non-human enemies you see are going to be uh, very bizarre mixtures of creatures you might find on Earth. And it's really fun to see what they may have been based on. You know, there's like a prawn with legs. Oh, and that sounds an ostrich. Awful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's really terrifying, actually. So he's just seen some stealth here. And the interesting thing about stealth in the Technomancer is you can really avoid a lot of combat situations with clever use of stealth. And there's like up to five different ways to, uh, to, uh, to beat every quest. And sometimes you can completely avoid combat. Or if you suck at stealth, you, you'll get seen and you have to fight your way through. Gotcha. And it's not only just in the open, open world parts, but actually in the, uh, in the quest itself. Up to five different ways to, to end each. Now, is there a skill tree for, for stealth abilities? Uh, yeah, you'll be able to improve your stealth as well. Will you be able to turn invisible using cybernetics at all? No, because uh, all of your powers revolve around electronics. Ah. So, I mean, uh, I mean, you could fry everyone's eyes or something okay. so they couldn't see, but it's not nice. <laughs> being invisible. It's a bit harsh. Gotcha. Uh, but no, mostly you'll just, uh, you'll just be uh, whacking people in the head to, to okay. kill them, not to that's, see you. That's fine or just, too. Uh, you know, standard stealth. Don't know either way. Do you think we could have a look at one of the other uh, one of the other combat styles? Yeah, uh, Seb, why don't you why don't you head to one of one you're most comfortable with? So uh, as I said, we're in uh, really early alpha stages right now, and the the combat style we were just using is the most polished. So these aren't completely finished yet, but it gives you an idea of what we're expecting. You can buff all of them with the electricity ability there. Obviously, it does more damage. Mm. So you've got, the, you've got the staff, you've got the sword and shield. Uh, did I see you had a gun earlier? You do have a gun. Okay. And it's mostly for CC, you know. Uh, uh, a, a lot of time you're getting attacked by mobs, it's useful to fire your gun off and push them back. And so these are the, these Technomancers right now. We're going to head straight into the dome here. And it's just going to explain how you need two people to enter it. And okay. Yeah. How many different types, how many different companions will you have throughout the game? Uh, there's going to be, uh, well, we don't know the full number yet, can't really tell you the full okay. number yet, but there'll be many different companions. And you'll even be able to have uh, romantic situations. Oh, yeah, that's fun. what I like to hear. Yeah. That's the fun part. Yeah, that's the fun part. I mean, aside that's from really hitting guys with electric play. staff, it's all about the, you know. Yeah, whacking people and yeah. uh, then mating. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep the population up, it is Mars. Yeah. So these are relics of Earth, in fact. The Technomancers uh, have all of the, uh, the relics of Earth. And these are things that other people don't know about because these are generations of people who have grown up on Mars, you know, disconnected from Earth. And it's really gone, civilization has gone back many, many hundreds of years. Okay. So it's always this odd juxtaposition of finding the old and the new. And, and even the newest stuff looks really ancient. Oh, those are really gross looking. Yeah, they're horrible. I and like that's em. why he just killed them for us. He's a nice guy. You know, now, I, res I respect the choice of prawns over spiders. I think spiders have been done to death and I'm not of them. And they're terrifying. Yeah. You know, these are creepy. Spiders are too terrifying. Yeah. Um, now, there's not supposed to be uh, uh, um, um, monsters here, uh, but because it's so old and derelict, he has, mm -hmm. to, he has to clear them out. Uh, now, this is where he's going to learn um, a secret of the Technomancers, because on Mars, uh, because the, the world was shifted out of its uh, orbit uh, due to the radiation, uh, there's mutants. Now, mutants uh, are deformed in many different ways, but they're sort of chastised uh, on Mars. They become slaves. And here in this scene right now, uh, Zachariah is learning that uh, the Technomancers themselves are mutants. They are genetically engineered and therefore mutants. Hmm. And this secret is something they have to hide 
from the, the governments of Mars, the, the, the four factions running Mars, because uh, essentially they will be enslaved. Okay. So right now they're working as henchmen because they think they're just you know, really talented. They don't know the root of their, their, uh, their powers and they're revered. But when they find out that they're just mutants, everything will change for them and the secret police will eventually try and chase uh -huh. them down. So he's just learned that about, uh, about is, their origins. Is that a kind of a core, a core theme in the game? That's a core theme in the game. A lot of the game is about um, how Zachariah and how the Technomancers deal with uh, this revelation that they are themselves mutants when mutants are so chastised in the game. What other types of environments are we going to see? Uh, you're going to see a lot of the uh, a lot of the cities and towns uh, are, are protected from sunlight by giant sheets of metal, you know, to protect people from the radiation. But you'll see um, many different cultures. It's one of the most interesting things about the Technomancer is that because there's 200, you know, more than 200 years since they lost contact with Earth, new cultures have emerged uh, based on the cultures of uh, of Earth. So you'll see many different villages with many different themes and a, and a culture for each faction. And you'll see outside environments and inside environments on multiple different levels. We've, we really worked hard on making the, uh, making the game quite um, three-dimensional in the level design. You know, it's not just you know, inside and flat, but there's actually levels um, you know, top to bottom. Okay. It's a very large uh, 3D Okay, I spoke too soon about the spiders, apparently. It's not really a spider. It's terrifying. It's, it's, yeah, Kill it. It's what a, is it? It's a level up from spider. Dear God. It's, uh, yeah. One up from an Australian spider. Oh. Yeah, he's not liking that. And is this, is this a, I'm, I'm guessing this is a boss fight. Not, it is a boss. Not a romance scene here. This is no, this <laughs> is not an example of romancing in the Technomancer. <laughs> in fact, or if it was, it would be a bad first date. It is a boss. Now, you've said you've got, you've got crafting, you've got, um, you know, kind of, towns and hub worlds is there is yep. there uh, like a marketplace yeah like there's marketplaces economy? there's places you can uh, purchase stuff of course you can craft your own items crafting is a really strong pillar of the game but you can also buy them from merchants who scavenge and most of the weapons you use and you find will be um, like things that have been scavenged like scrap metal like hammers and swords and things like that that way right. and you'll be able to buy stuff in the cities but but depending on who you ally with um, it will really limit where you can go and who you can be seen by because <laughs> you'll make enemies and they will attack you no matter where you are and uh, that will affect the end of the game. There's multiple endings, so huh. depending on who you ally with and the choices you make, yeah. as I said, uh, up to five different ways to end a quest, you'll have uh, one of the uh, many different endings. It seems like game. you guys are definitely you know, taking, some, taking some cues from, from Mass Effect on that front, and people love to you know, replay that and kind of see all the different branching paths. So that's Yeah, I mean, it's impossible not to take influence from other games. Uh, spiders love games. We love yeah. games. Uh, and... Uh, um, yeah, it's not that we take the best from you know each game, mm -hmm. but 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 we really think that we've uh, made our own thing, uh, and that that that, that it's uh, yeah, it's definitely got a lot of what people would expect. Yeah, well, it looks it looks awesome. When is it Thanks. coming out? And it's what coming platforms? out 2016 on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, to chat. no worries. Uh, we got plenty more Gamescom stuff coming up, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.